pursuit is for the pleasure of Allah. I will have my iPhone, but I will work towards it. I will make sure I don't do something haram to get it. And I will make sure that it does not make me go against the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you get your iPhone, subhanallah, or it's just an example, okay? I use Samsung, by the way. So once you have that phone, what happens? It, how you use it really will be for you or against you. Everything you do is actually a test for you or against you. Is it within the pleasure of Allah or not? If it is, tick, you passed it. If it is not, cross, you failed it. That's what it is. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors, to be pleased with us, work towards it. If you come to Allah even a little bit, He comes to you much more than that. He's the creator. He does not need our worship. We need it. It's our test. You know, the examiner knows the answers to the test, the mathematics test. The, the examiner knows the answers, but the examiner will not tell you the answers because then the test does not become yours. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's case, yes, he's the examiner. He's testing us. Indeed, he told us the answers and he's telling us, I'm going to put you through situations. You know the answer. My brothers and sisters, we all know what is right and wrong. We all know what is expected of us as Muslimin. And it's beautiful. Yes, there is a lot of discipline, goodness, kindness, so much more. Worship Allah alone. Follow the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as best as you can. Stay away from sin and where you have faulted, go back and repent. That's an answer. Imagine that's, that's like erasing the answer, the wrong answer and putting a right one. You know, when you enter the examination room, there is a specific period of time and you must answer in that period of time. And what happens is if you've written the wrong answer, you can ask for another paper. You can cross out the wrong answer for as long as it's within the time and you can write the correct answer. Once the bell rings, once the time is up, you have to hand those papers in. It's gone. The same applies in this world. We are in the exam room for as long as we are breathing, for as long as we are alive. You can keep changing the answers. You can ask for a new sheet. Tawbah, subhanallah. You can turn back to Allah. I made a mistake. For example, those who might have committed big crimes, those who were hooked onto pornography, for example, or adultery or gambling or drugs or anything else. They can say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, I have changed my ways. I regret. I'm not going to do that again. You're given a new page. Now you write the correct answer. And what happens? That carrot will dangle itself again. I know of a young man who quit pornography after a few years. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to quit whatever bad we might be doing, whether it's that or something else. So he quit it. And then he says after a while that, you know, immediately after that, things happened to me that seemed to be making this bad habit of mine dangle in front of my eyes as though it's teasing me. Now you've asked Allah's forgiveness. Let's see. It's going to be made much easy. You're going to come. You're going to come. That's your test. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who says, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to drink alcohol anymore. And suddenly they enter Tesco's and there's a huge sale. You know, that which he used to drink so much. And suddenly it's, you know, two for the price of one. And he's looking at it and he says, Allah, I promised you I'm not going to do it. So it's over. That's a winner. That's the pleasure of Allah. Whereas another one would say, Allah, I know you're so merciful. So you know what? After the sale, I'm going to quit again. If that's the case, there'll be another sale and another sale and another sale. But when you've pleased Allah, there is a sweetness that is of a different nature. There is a sweetness of a different nature. You know, sin has a sweetness that is fake. It has a sweetness. People are excited. It, it's a boost and you go. It's like cheating in the examination. It's so exciting until you get caught. And then suddenly your headlines on the news. Why? You cheated after having all A's. What did they do? It's like those who, you know, the Olympics just passed now. I don't know about this particular one, but in previous ones, the example is those who won the race and six months down the line or after the race, a few weeks down the line, it was found that their blood sample was or had traces of something that was unacceptable. How do they feel? It's a disgrace, not only to themselves, but the whole nation that they were serving. So, Imagine when a person commits a sin, I told you there is a fake sweetness. There is a sweetness. Shaitan pushes you to it. Adultery is far sweeter than 
being intimate with your own spouse, but it's a fake sweetness. It comes with a lot of regret afterwards. It comes with a lot of darkness afterwards. It comes with a lot of bad within a person. It leads you to something else and another. It leads you to take Allah out of the equation in a way that when you're on your deathbed, you start thinking, whoa, what did I do my entire life? Did I pursue the pleasure of Allah? No, I didn't. I pursued the pleasure, my own pleasures, the pleasure of the devil. I became a devil myself. I went against the commands of Allah. People say Islam has too many rules and regulations. I say, yes, full of discipline. You, if you're disciplined, you achieve. We've given examples in the past of private schools. They have many more rules sometimes than schools that are perhaps public. Not to say any one of the two might be getting better results. That's got to do with how hard they worked perhaps. But the general idea that we have, especially in my part of the world, is when you're sent to a school that has a lot of rules and regulations, your character is refined, your conduct. People can see it just from the way you speak. The way you interact, many rules, regulations. So we too as Muslimin have a lot of rules and regulations. And Allah says, when I have prohibited you something, this is, these are the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When something is prohibited, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited something, stay away from it. And when, when something is instructed, do it as best as you can. Do it as best as you can. Amazing. That's how you will achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be focused, my brothers and sisters, upon something that will destroy all prohibited desires. Anything that is lustful, prohibited, that which is immoral, that which is filled with sin, the regret, or should I say this, that which is transgression against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you really are focused upon the fact that in a few moments, you're going to be meeting with Allah. Then by His will, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be able to do more to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be able to do much more. Like I said, the worldly life is marketed today in such a way that it makes it seem like that is the focus. That is the main aim. Those people are at a loss the day they die, everything comes to an end. Whatever they lived for is over. Now they are in a place where they did not prepare for. That's the difference between a believer and the one who doesn't believe. A believer believes that I'm going to go somewhere. I need to prepare for that eternal place more than I've prepared for the few years I'm here. You know, a lot of us, we want to buy a home, a house, mashallah. So, what happens? We end up paying towards the house for many years. Say, 20 years. That sounds realistic, right? 20 to 30 years. We end up paying slowly in installments. Inshallah, halal installments by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we end up paying slowly. How many years did you pay for the house? You paid for it 25 years. Let's say 25 years, okay? Because I didn't hear, hear a yes when I said, is it realistic? So maybe in Britain, it's five more years, okay? So, 25 years you paid. You started at the age of 25. You paid for another 25 years. By the time the house became yours, you were 50 years old. You had another 13 years if you lived as long as Rasulullah sallallahu who was the most loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say you died at 63, that's where he passed away. So 63, you had another 13 years to enjoy what? The house. 13 years later, you went or I went. May Allah grant us Jannah al firdaus. But if we didn't prepare for the palace of the hereafter, which is eternal, then... We would have just had a house for 13 years here in the world. That too, you have roof leaks, you need to update the house, you need to paint it, you need to change the wallpaper every now and again. And if you have a bossy spouse, you need to change it every so often. <laughs> Notice I didn't say wife. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, the idea here is, yes, you want your home, you will have your home. Everything is fine. It's beautiful. But just prepare for the other one. It's not so difficult. It's intertwined. Don't miss your salah while you're earning for the house, this, this house. So I'm paying for that house and this house. You hear that? Worship Allah alone. That's by far the biggest payment. So wherever others are being worshipped besides Allah, deities, or wherever polytheism is being committed, 
Just by staying away, it's a payment for the Akhirah. Allahu Akbar. It's a payment for the hereafter. Wherever Muhammad Sallallahu path is, you follow that path. It's a payment for the hereafter. By seeking Allah's forgiveness, it's a payment for the hereafter. You're paying for that house. That is the pleasure of Allah. Because a true winner is he who or she who is going to be on the day of judgment, proud of what he or she has done. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.